This video is presented by NewWoodworker.com. Virtually everything we use at the table saw can scratch, scuff, or stain it. Sliding even high-end miter gauges in wood will eventually leave a mark on the cast iron. That free miter gauge that they gave it with the table saw might be the first to scuff it up. Don't get me wrong, I love my cast iron tenoning jig. But it's made of 25 pounds of cast iron, and you can pretty much count on that scuffing up the table sooner or later. And no matter how often you wipe the sweat from your brow, sooner or later you're going to find a drop that got away from you. And you always find that the next day. Brushing off the sawdust when you're done using the saw for today is a good habit, but it's not going to stop staining. Even the far end of a rip fence that seems to glide easily on a plastic pad will leave a mark sooner or later. I can't feel these marks in the cast iron, so they're not deep scratches, but I sure would like to make them go away sometimes. I'm not real sure what this is, but it feels like sap. Whatever it is, I really don't need it on my table saw. There's a number of commercially made products for cleaning up and taking care of a cast iron surface. The ones meant for cleaning the surface up are more of a spot thing, they're not made for treating the entire surface. Thanks to Barry Schweiger, the product manager in Jet and Powermatic, we have another idea that works very well. I've used these abrasive pads for years for cleaning up my metal, but I'm liking these Sandflex blocks. In this story, I used a medium one when I have a spot, but then used a fine one to clean up the rest of the surface. These are essentially rubber blocks that have abrasive mixed in all the way through. As you wear off the surface, new abrasives exposed. The first thing we want to do is make sure you get all the dust off of the table surface. And then we need to strip off all of the things that we've been putting on the table to protect it and keep it slick. Plain mineral spirits usually does the trick, but make sure you check the container of whatever you've been putting on your saw. Then after we get everything off, you just need to wipe it down and let it dry. Now we can start using the Sandflex blocks. You'll notice as soon as you start rubbing it on the surface that you can see a change. This is the fine grain block, and I use that most of the time. When I come across some spots or stains, I use the medium grain block to clean those up. It usually doesn't take much scrubbing to get rid of those kind of spots and stains. As soon as the spot is gone, I go back to the fine block and use that to even out the surface. You'll find that it really doesn't take much to get rid of all these spots and shadows that we've had on our cast iron. We can't get rid of everything because we'd have to take off too much metal. But we can make the surface look a whole bunch better. And with the surface being so clean and smooth, you might even notice your wood moving across it easier as well. In the time we've been talking here, I did this one wing, and you can see how different it looks from the rest of the saw. It feels a lot smoother and it's got more of a shine, even though I haven't put any protectant on it yet. When you get done refurbishing the entire surface, you want to go over it and wipe it down and make sure all the grit's gone, and then apply whatever you use to protect your cast iron. Here I'm wiping on a coat of my Bull Shields T9, because I like that on my table saws. After spraying it on, I just wipe it around with a paper towel to make sure that it's evenly dispersed. Now my cast iron looks almost brand new, and it only took me about an hour and a half to do.